Somebody who comes into the emergency department who has a bleed inside of their brain typically will end up in an intensive care unit. Now, there's four different types of bleeds that we care about inside of the brain. It's going to be an epidural, a subdural, a subarachnoid, or an intraparenchymal hemorrhage. And those are all different types of brain bleeds that can ultimately land somebody in an ICU. What I'm going to do is go through each of them individually over the next four videos and try and teach you a little bit about them. So epidural hematomas can either be arterial or venous in nature. The arterial injuries usually happen if there's blunt or penetrating trauma to the temporal region. And that's because there's a middle meningeal artery that runs here. And so if someone gets hit here, that could be a common cause for an arterial epidural bleed. Venous epidural hematomas are more common in the pediatric populations, and these can happen from very minor traumatic injuries. In terms of how often this happens, usually we see about 2% of patients who come in with head injuries have uh, epidural hematomas. In terms of fatal brain bleeds, this accounts for 5 to 15% of fatal bleeds, and about 80 to 90% of these patients have an underlying skull fracture. Now, the pathophysiology of an epidural bleed is you're basically dissecting the dura from the base of the skull, and that potential space is now filling with blood, which gives you a CT scan that looks something like this. Now, the common presentation for these patients is going to be someone who has a trauma to their temporal region, gets knocked out, regains consciousness, but then slowly deteriorates over time neurologically. Other symptoms include nausea, vomiting, headaches, lethargy, and potentially even seizures. The treatment management for this is usually getting a CAT scan to evaluate the size of the bleed, following their uh, neuro status by doing frequent neuro checks. And then depending on the size of the bleed and the severity of their symptoms, they'd either go to surgery to get that blood evacuated and to stop the bleeding, or we may just watch it to see how the patient progresses. If the patient's on a blood thinner or has some sort of coagulopathy, usually we try and reverse that to make sure there's an ongoing bleeding because of that.